My name is Daniel Loftus. I'm a technical content developer. In this case study presentation, I will explain how I migrated developer API content from the Atlassian Confluence Wiki to Dita, a markup language that enables writers to transform their content into multiple outputs from a single source. Confluence is a popular wiki that integrates with social media technologies to make sure that the content that is developed is easily and securely accessed and reviewed by target audiences, such as subject matter experts or customers or partners in the field. How do we get information from Confluence, where information is so easy to update and often is more up to date than any other information available, to a more professional and less dynamic version of that information, such as a PDF, EPUB, or online help? Here is an example of the Confluence Wiki. This is the developer API documentation that I will be mi migrating to Dita. Note that this includes the logo, the date of modification, and a survey widget. I don't want to have this in the final version of my PDF or my EPUB. A cost-effective solution is to output this wiki content in such a way that it can be reconstructed at the most granular levels so that I can specify using third-party data processing algorithms what should be included, such as the survey widget, or what should not be included. Typically, this is done by outputting the content to XML. Now, I could do this in DocBook, but DocBook does not include a transclusion mechanism, which I'll explain later, so I'm going to proceed using DITA. But first, a little bit of background information about what DITA is. One of the most prominent characteristics of the format of online information in general is that it is it, it, rather than consisting of an unbroken continuous stream of information, like what you would see in a book, Online help is broken down into digestible chunks. That information could simply be arbitrarily divided by how much information can fit on one screen, but more often technical information is placed within an architecture that makes it easier for users to access little bits of information from which they can link to other related bits of information. When developing content, I like to use DITA as a means of breaking down information because it breaks it down into the most relevant pieces of information uh, known as types, that, hence the word typing architecture, which we will now uh, explore in further detail. DITA was created by IBM to provide a framework or specialization for creating semantically structured content that makes it easier for users to access information. Each chunk of information in DITA can be categorized as a concept, a task, a reference, or just a generic topic. Each of the categories that I just described, or types, correspond with a DTD, which stands for a Document Type Definition. The DTD structures the information so that it follows a pattern that makes it easier for a user to re read and access the information that they're looking for. Once the information is structured in DITA, it can then be organized into maps from which multiple types of outputs, such as online help, PDFs, or EPUBs can then be generated. Because DITA is open source, it can be readily accessed not only by readers, but also by machines that use non-proprietary data processing algorithms. And DITA also provides a transclusion, otherwise known as a single sourcing mechanism, that makes it more cost-effective than other XML languages like DocBook that cannot distribute changes so readily amongst information that is repeated throughout an information unit. We will use DITA in this example for this reason. Anyone can use DITA simply by downloading the DITA Open Toolkit from the web. The DITA Open Toolkit can be used with an XML editor to produce output in many formats. It consists of several types of files, including Java files, Apache files, XSL and XML files, which are particularly important for this uh, presentation, and a native XSLT processor that recognizes and transforms the XML files into different formats. When I originally authored this information in Confluence, I didn't use a DTD for each chunk of information. Basically, each, each topic was stored in a flat wiki file. However, the information that I did develop was separated at such a level that it would be easy to transfer each file into an existing DTD, or data architecture. The Confluence Wiki does feature an export function that enables me to save a set of the contents as an XML file. Unfortunately, the XML file that it exports is not compatible with DITA. It's simply one long file and it doesn't feature or offer the option to transclude any of the information that is repeated throughout all of the information unit. The Confluence Wiki also features an export function that enables the Wiki Administrator to save a set of contents as a PDF. As you can see on this screen, 
Here is the PDF that it generates. Atlassian Confluence does allow for filtering of the widgets in the PDF, and it also allows for some additional formatting using, of all things, CSS. However, the names of the CSS classes and spans are nowhere listed on the website. So first, the, the content needs to be migrated to HTML, the CSS needs to be identified, and then once the CSS is identified, one can go back and create a custom style sheet for the PDF using whatever CSS spans and classes have been identified in the HTML version. Unfortunately, that doesn't include page numbers, headers, and footers. So ultimately, generating a PDF from within Confluence is only useful to the extent that that PDF is then portable and can be accessed from a mobile device. It is not, however, up to a professional standard that would be acceptable for, say, for example, selling in a bookstore. With that in mind, I went ahead and migrated the content first to HTML because I knew that if I migrated the content to HTML, I could further then migrate from HTML into DITA within an XML editor that provided an XSLT uh, style sheet that would migrate content between HTML and DITA. So when I first migrated the content to HTML, it was not structurally compliant with HTML standards. Basically, what I'm going to share with you from this side is a lot of information, so feel free to just pass, you know, to not, not take too much information here. Uh, you know, if you miss any of it, it's okay. There's a lot more information at the Scriptorium Text YouTube channel that goes into further detail about this, but I do want to provide somewhat of an overview of how I got this information into DITA, so you can have a sense, perhaps, of how much time it takes to get content from HTML into DITA. So after using the uh, export tool and migrating the content from within Confluence from the wiki to HTML. I then used the uh, HTML tidy tool to quickly identify and rectify HTML tags that were not in compliance with HTML standards. Once that was fixed, then I was ready to use the migration tool, a command line migration tool uh, from which I could specify uh, a DTD and then point the uh, processor, an XSLT processor, uh, if, so that it could migrate or, or transform the content from HTML into a corresponding DTD, such as a concept, task, or reference. So I did this with each of the files that I wanted to uh, trans transform, and uh, fortunately there were only 15 of them, so it didn't take too much time, like about two hours or so. And then I opened each file, once it was tr uh, transformed into data, I opened each file and uh, 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 located content within each file that had been tagged by the transformation tool as needing to be cleaned up. And those are typically marked as uh, with the markup tag required cleanup. Usually these are just little bits of information that don't fit within what DITA has, uh, what, it, what has been considered uh, the compliant with the DTD. For example, a list can't begin a, um, can't begin a topic in, DT, in DITA. A short description describing the topic is the first thing that should come in a DITA topic. So if that is the case, then uh, basically I, I would cut and paste and reorganize the content so that it was still uh, useful to a reader, but organized in a way that was compliant with the DTD. Once I had done that, then I began to add keywords, which would help users to locate the information later when it was part of an inf when it be when it would become part of an information architecture. Then I, after I had added keywords uh, to all of the different topics and uh, taken care of the required cleanup, I, I analyzed the information to see throughout all the topics which topics had repeated information, such as URLs, and there were a few of those as well as information that, uh, like marketing product information, and I replaced all of the URLs and all of the marketing product information that was repeated throughout the information unit with CONREFs, which are CONREFs are uh, a short shorthand for common reference, which is basically uh, a string uh, that is uh, that or a reference that points to a string, uh, a, a set of strings that is contained in, in a CONREF file. So I created a new file that listed all of the URLs and all of the marketing product information in one place, and that basically. Uh, allows me in the future, if any any terms change or a URL changes, to just go to this one place, update the file, and then automatically the entire information set will be updated with the new information. 
after I had completed the, the CONREFs, I then uh, mapped all of the uh, content. Um,